Hello, Croeso, Vidi Griffith Rees a VCBA Cwmni, Mail Gwynny Griffith, Gynafan Wraig and Harad. Hello and welcome to you all. My name is Griffith Rees and I'm the owner of Gwynny Griffith together with my wife, Ang Harad. We're a small honey company producing our own honey here in Kermanisha, but we also purchase in Welsh honey from other local bee farmers. We sell honey right across the UK via direct to the end consumer through our website. We sell to small shops, uh, medium-sized supermarkets, and we sell wholesale to Blasar Void, who distributes our honey uh, for us. But we're not just a honey company. We sell beekeeping equipment as well. We sell uh, beginner kits, starter kits, and hives. If you're a professional beekeeper or a professional bee farmer wanting extra equipment, then we supply that now as well. And we do beekeeping training. So if anyone here is thinking of wanting to start beekeeping, we tailor for all that kind of things here as well from the farm. Well, that's enough about the business. On with the show. So the first thing I want to talk about is COVID. Now, when COVID came last year, it was a big shock for everyone. You know, I was really worried at the start. Uh, before COVID, the majority of our sales were direct to shops. So cafes, dairies, restaurants, etc. They were taking the majority of the honey from us. They were forced to close. The supply stopped there and then. And we were very worried, thinking, how are we going to survive this? Because I still work part-time. I work three days a week. And Harad works full-time within the business. Both of us have given up full-time employment to follow this dream. And uh, we thought it was going to come to a crashing end due to COVID. But luckily, uh, the year before, we just invested a little bit in an online website where people could buy our honey from there. It wasn't selling very much at all, maybe just a few jars a week. But since COVID, the business has totally changed how we run it, what we offer, just everything about the business has totally changed from selling the majority of our honey direct to retail shops. We now sell the majority of the honey direct to the end consumer through the website. So it's just been an unbelievable transformation, really. We're struggling a little bit with the growth now. Uh, we're supposed to get some staff in to help us out. But the, the growth has been pretty brutal uh, over COVID. We've had the kids home every day, increase in online sales. And the biggest struggle that it's been from moving direct to retail shops to selling direct to the end consumer is before we should deliver, say, 50, 60 jars of honey to one outlet, now we've got to deliver... 50 to 60 individual jars in individual boxes direct to the end consumer through our courier network. Now that is a lot of work, a lot of labour, but the margins are much better as well. So it's a bit of a cash 22. The turnover is much better doing it like that, but there's a lot more labour involved. And another thing we did over lockdown was we weren't scared to deviate what the business was doing. So before lockdown, we were mainly just a honey company selling our own honey that we produce. We didn't buy any honey in whatsoever. We buy honey in now due uh, to the growth that we've had over the lockdown. Um, we sell a lot more honey. We can't produce enough honey ourselves. So we buy Welsh honey from local producers as well. But one of the best things we did over lockdown that saved us, we wanted to bring to market more of a bee-friendly uh, feel, more bee-friendly garden-type product. And I was a very keen gardener. We wanted to see how we could integrate that into Wayne and Griffith and into the business. Now, Angarad is a big gardener. When lockdown came in, we started doing more gardening, but we couldn't buy compost anywhere. Now, it turns out that the majority of the compost sold in the UK comes from abroad. Most of the peat comes from Ireland, and then a lot of the other compost then comes from Holland, same place as the flowers. There was a massive demand for compost. People couldn't supply it, and I saw the opportunity there. We don't live that far from Combe Environmental. They produce their own organic compost made in Wales here in Carmarthenshire. I approached their commercial division, told them who we were and were they willing for us to start selling their compost and for us to offer that compost available throughout the UK. 
luckily they said yes we're the first people that have bought Merlin's Magic Compost to the UK market before it's only been available within Kamana so some outlets that they've got themselves and other local outlets within the county and some uh, just further afield in the county but all of it stayed uh, in West and South Wales now that is now available right throughout the UK and just last year we sold over a hundred tons of compost and the majority of that go into London um, obviously in London lockdown was probably a lot worse people stuck in flats high raises wanting to grow their own food pass some time you can't catch the tube and carry 10 bags of compost with you on the tube so people in London they're used to getting things delivered and luckily that was a massive saving grace for us through lockdown uh, and that enabled us to get instant cash flow uh, made us being able to stay in business and luckily as that was progressing through then the honey sales picked up again and uh, that pretty much saved us so never be scared to deviate off your business plan because you've got to see what's in front of you if there's something selling exceptionally well and you can tie that into your own business make that your own um, not your own product but put your own goals and business ideas to it then that could be a great opportunity for you as well another thing that happened in lockdown was people couldn't get hand sanitizers now a local whiskey company i'm sure you've heard of them pandarin whiskey bought their own hand sanitizers out we approached pandarin asked them if we could stock their hand sanitizers and offer that for sale for our customers luckily they said yes as well and we started selling hand sanitizers and we did stuff like care packages where you could buy a hamper of honey and get hand sanitizers in the box with it that worked out really well so co-working with businesses especially during hard times is very important but more importantly it's very good to do it in good times as well and i'll share just a quick story with you in the middle of lockdown our friends Murthin heritage their business model totally changed just like ours they were selling into a lot of cafes delis restaurants etc that trade stopped overnight they set up Merlin Heritage and Friends. They asked us, were we willing to sell honey into them at trade for them to distribute to their customers? We said yes. And to this day, they still buy honey from us now. Now, we've got a lot of time for Merlin Heritage. They've worked exceptionally hard. They deserve all the success they've had. But it goes to show food companies and local businesses working together is exceptionally important because you're tapping into each other's audience into each other's uh, markets and you know it's just co-working like that is very very important it's been a massive help to my business here at Gwyn and Griffith so what do we offer here at Gwyn and Griffith I've mentioned we sell honey we sell beekeeping equipment and obviously from that story we sell compost but we sell a range of products now. We sell beeswax candles, we sell beeswax food wraps, pretty much anything to do with bees and honey, we now sell it. So we've got a, a range of wildflower Welsh honey, which is uh, the biggest seller that we've got. Uh, we offer that now for sale in a number size jars from really small um, sample jars for the tourist industries, bed and breakfast, cafes, restaurants, that type of uh, market where we sell all the way up to a bucket, three kilo bucket of honey uh, for people to use in their ingredients, cooking, food production, uh, that kind of market and every other size in between we sell it. Over lockdown we bought out a one kilo jar, a big kilo jar. That turned out to be a, a big success. People wanted to buy more product, they wanted better value for money, so buying it in a bigger tub uh, made perfect sense we saw some research last year that peanut butter is now selling very well in larger size jars and some of the cheaper honeys on the market they've moved over to bigger size jars uh, so the market was telling us people wanted value for money we bought the kilo jar out and uh, it's, it's been one of the best decisions we've done offering honey in a bigger jar we offer lots of hampers these days so we never used to offer this before but we now sell hampers we do valentine's day hampers we do um, st david's day hampers we've got a little welsh lady beeswax candle that we produce here on the farm 
So what we, one of the trends we noticed over COVID was people were still buying. They were at home, they were getting their furlough money, people wanted to buy and they couldn't see their friends and family so they were buying gifts for their friends and family. Now you can take something simple as honey which you might not think sells very well but combine that into a hamper, turn it into a gift then that sells very well. We had, we've had I think the best Christmas um, ever this year uh, purely down to the food hampers and the bee hampers that we were offering. One thing we do here on the farm which is quite different, we offer hive adoptions for businesses. So we were lucky, uh, Mentera Business, Cowine, they adopted the first ever Gwyn and Griffith hive adoption hive here. They adopted it for two years and that gave us the opportunity to market the hive adoption um, program we've got here. And we've had some, some really big companies uh, wanting to team up with us on that. Uh, we've had Iceland Foods adopt a hive with us. We've got a couple of big firms right now in the pipeline for this year. Cardiff Airport adopted a hive with us. Uh, a couple of local businesses adopted hive, hives with us. And even businesses in England. We've had a computer software business in England. We've had uh, a CBD company in England wanting to adopt a hive with us. And they use that honey then either in their own ingredients. So the CBD company, they use the honey from their hive for the CBD products. The software company then uses the, hive, uh, uses the honey from the hive to give as gifts to their customers. So it works out really well. That's been a great part of the business. Uh, not so much financially. It's quite expensive to set up a hive and uh, all the labor for the photos, videos, etc. But that's been great for marketing. And again, teaming up with businesses, especially businesses much larger with us, with a much wider reach. So you can imagine, uh, compare Iceland, they've got a massive audience compared to Gwyn and Griffith. So that's worked out really well for us. Not a lot of people do hive adoptions, but it's worked really well for us on the farm here. Producing honey isn't as easy as just placing bees out in the field and watch the money roll in. It's not like that at all. Last year was the worst year we've had honey production wise uh, in about seven years. The honey production, the honey crop then uh, with us was down at least 40% last year. Um, and it just goes to show how important it is to diversify your business. Not all your eggs are in one basket, but luckily uh, we were able to buy Welsh honey from local producers as well and bring that to market. Um, that's worked out exceptionally well. I didn't think we were gonna start buying in Welsh honey this early. Uh, it, was always, it was always one of the goals to be able to sell more honey than what we can produce and support other beekeepers. Uh, luckily, we're in a position now where our business is supporting other beekeepers as well. And I just want to talk really quick about Cowine, how important mental business and Cowine has been to our business. Before we joined Cowine, uh, we didn't have aspirations to grow the honey business uh, to anywhere near what it is now. And we're planning on growing it much larger again. And Cowine drastically helped us with that. They showed us what was possible. They've supported us uh, as a business. Like I mentioned, they've adopted a hive with us. They're on the phone if I need any advice. They've got people I can talk to. They've got people, if I'm exporting, I can talk to people there, expertise there we've tapped into. They have helped us out massively. And if you're not a part of Cowine, then I highly recommend you talk to them and be a part of it. Uh, if it weren't for Cowine, I don't think Gwyn and Griffith would be where it is now. And just to talk a bit more there, you know, Cowine has taken us to London to uh, showcase our honey there in the middle of London. We've been on study trips, study tours with them. Uh, we get regular meetings with, with the cluster, honey cluster we're a, a part of them with. The, the knowledge and, that I've gained and the motivation and the insight that I've gained from being part of Cowine, I, you just can't put a value on that. Um, massive shout out to Harv here, was, she's the, the head of the honey cluster here and uh, she's brilliant and it's a credit to Cowine. So I'll talk quick about what it is to keep bees. So really, really quick, you get bees, you put them in the hive and you put them in a suitable location. Like any animal, you need to look after them, make sure they've got enough food. Now, if the season is good, the bees will work all the flowers within your area and they will bring that nectar back and convert it into honey and store it in the hives. Okay. Now hopefully they produce more honey than what they need 
and that is your honey to take home to sell. And like most things, it's a numbers game. If you want to turn that into a commercial business, then you need a few hives. We've got just over 100 hives you're going to get with, and we're going to grow that number again. But that's all the bee does all summer. They fly from the hive, they visit the flower, they take the nectar and the pollen out the flower, and they bring that back to the hive. The nectar is converted into honey, and the pollen is protein to rear the brood of the bees. So the protein is fed to the baby bees, the honey is fed to the older bees. That's how, basically, in, in the super simplest terms that I can think of, that's how honey is created. Obviously, there's a big story of how you extract the honey. I'm not going to be able to fit that in this video, but that is the process of producing honey uh, and farming honey. So here in Wales, we pretty much only produce one type of honey. Uh, there's no, especially at this part of Wales, come out of the there's no arable crops. So your honey is going to be from wildflower. Now, the wildflower comes from a, a massive range of flowers. So it'll come from the trees. You've got hawthorn, blackthorn, sycamore, and then all the way to the wildflowers. And even wildflowers like dandelion. Dandelion is a fantastic source of nectar for the bees, produces a great honey. Don't cut your, daffodil, don't cut your dandelions in your lawn. The bees need them. But it's that kind of flowers that the bees produce the honey. The biggest crop comes from the brambles and the clover. That's your main honey crop. But if you're lucky and you've got the heather moors nearby, then you can take your bees to the heather moors and produce heather honey. Now that is, in my opinion, the best honey that you can get. Welsh heather honey. Now I would say that that is better than manuka honey. Now the big difference between Welsh heather honey and let's for example compare to manuka honey is a lot of the manuka on the market is blended down so they mix it with other honeys to bulk the product out. I've actually done a video on YouTube about manuka honey so if you're interested in finding out more about manuka honey then go to the Gwen and Griffith YouTube channel to find out more but take it from me if you want the best honey money can buy at a lot less than the price of manuka honey, then I would seriously consider buying heather honey. But more importantly, Welsh heather honey. Well, that's it for this video. Just a quick one. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'm hoping you enjoy the rest of tucking and you learn a lot more, and it inspires you to grow your businesses as well. I'm Griffith Reese, and thanks for watching.